I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. So I'm replacing you with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders. No more leaks. Just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh, I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the right chapter.com 99.9 KISW the rock of Seattle according to this new survey two out of three Americans say yep they got at least one fashion choice or a look from their past that makes them cringe I think anytime I go home and see the pictures of me as a teen even looking at pictures of like from when we were going through MySpace trying to find some of the old pictures before those were gone it's just kind of <laughs> it's like what the hell was I thinking see I I, I have I have outfits and, and fashion choices that made other people cringe never made me cringe I loved everything I had but yeah? people hated what I wore and I know I, I look at them and I go I don't know I dug it I like it yeah you miss it yeah I do I mean, I mean like you, your Al Pacino shirt you yeah I didn't realize how much you hated those you never said I didn't hate them I mean the hate's a strong word well, but you made a comment and I had you know you well you know when you first joined us you really were a good employee because you never said anything about anything you didn't like well also I knew you really liked them so who am I to poo poo on your yeah. bad shirt parade exactly <laughs> I didn't know you, I didn't know you thought there was such a bad shirt in that parade because I've always believed that like what I think is dumb is something that's cool to someone else no different than what I think is cool is dumb to somebody else so I mean what, 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 what am I going to argue with you over your fashion yeah that's the difference between you and I if I think something's dumb I let people know yeah because I feel like they need to know how dumb that is like guys showing up to work wearing sandals <laughs> yeah exactly oh yeah oh, I hated that look <laughs> yeah I know I had to talk to them about yeah. that I still hate that look I know it's a Pacific Northwest a Northwest thing and I still just don't want to see a guy's feet in the workplace yeah whatever I see I don't mind sandals if you're wearing shorts but it's something about when you're wearing jeans and you're rocking sandals it just looks yeah. weird. Yeah, and the sandal socks yeah, like thing. Hipster Jesus or something like that. Yeah, hipster, hipster Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I'm Hipster Jesus. <laughs> your skinny jeans and your sandals. So the number one thing on the list that uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of women are really commenting on this, shoulder pads. Oh, wow. <laughs> From the 80s. Well, dudes had the shoulder pads in the suits, too. Yeah, we did. Do they still do? I don't wear a suit, so I don't know. I don't think they do anymore. No, I hope not. A little bit, but not enough where it's like like super like out of control, like the shoulder like pads. A, you don't look like a football player. Yeah, but you're right. <laughs> the f- blouses with the shoulder pads. Were, yeah. What were what were women thinking? My wife just bought a dress that she just got recently. She's gonna go. We're going to a wedding, and she wanted it's a it's a it's a Star Wars theme. Mm-hmm. So she wanted to get a dress that looked like it could be like something from maybe Star Wars, and it has shoulder pads. But it it, it it's like a throw back it looks like it's from the 80s but then part of it looks like it's maybe steampunk and are I'm you going like, really to this? yeah okay I was I'm, I'm what stoked. are you dressing as yeah I, i'm wearing it I, I i bought a star wars t-shirt to wear with my jacket so that's going to be my that's my flair come on man yeah I, go see it yeah. up a bit dress yeah. like a wookie or something yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, a wookie with a sports coat dude that would be sick that would be very sick i'm not doing it but you're right that's a great thing that'd be good if it was winter time forget you forget who i am your BJ Shad. I don't like Halloween. Why? Because I don't like oh, having to get yeah. all the costumed up. Your idea of Halloween is wearing a T-shirt that's Halloween themed. There you yeah. go. So I'm going to a Star Wars, and I hey, I went and uh, well, I should say I had Vicky go for me. There you go. Uh, Vicky went and got me a T-shirt. Yep. I have that shirt. Do you really? Yeah, I got a Target. Oh, you guys can be Star Bros. Yeah, we I, could one day wear it together. I didn't know you had that shirt. Now yeah. I have to give it back. Oh, geez. Why? It's a great shirt. I don't, it's yeah, nice one. You don't it's wear a Target the, Star Wars shirt. But you had it before me. It's yours. I can't. You want to borrow my number one Star Wars fan shirt with the yeah. with the, the Enterprise on it? That would be funny. <laughs> You'd probably piss some people off yeah. there. Yeah, and, and the bride is a big Star Wars fan, so Dude, I don't want to piss her off. You could be a stormtrooper with a sports coat. Anything with a sports coat would be pretty I think awesome. we're going to see some sweet. cool outfits. It's, it's encouraged. I mean, she's asked people to go full 
regalia. I just want to be comfortable, you know. So it's like I'm not gonna, you know. I'm, I'm so I got the T-shirt. I found an R two D two suit. Oh, oh, BJ, come on, that is cool. R two D suit. <laughs> nice. nice. It's only one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Oh, I would get it, but I bet someone's going to do it. Free shipping. Yeah, I mean, someone else is going to do it. I doubt anyone's going to do that. No one's dropping one hundred and eighty dollars on an R two D two suit. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Although if the groom does it, that'd be awkward. Dude, exactly. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if the groom is not wearing that outfit, I mean, that's a perfect thing to get married in. All of him and his groomsmen should be rocking that. I agree. Is there a C three PO suit? I'll look. Yeah, I agree with you. That's that, that's something that the groomsmen should have. That they would look fantastic in that, especially with the theme of the wedding. That'd be funny if they do a Wookiee suit as well. Like it's like Wookiee hair for the suit. Oh, oh yeah. Yeesh. And I'm wondering if the bride, if she's going to basically have the Leia hairdo, don't you think she should have that? Oh, oh the and, cinnamon buns. Yeah, yeah. She should wear the white dress. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes time for the actual reception, she switches into slave Leia suit. Okay. Nice. Or maybe for the consummation of the yeah. of the wedding. That should be for later on. That oh, should yeah. be for the wedding night. I'm not sure. <laughs> that, you know, you know, I didn't find a suit, but I found a onesie. For C3PO. Oh, wow. Okay, let's we'll all wear onesies. And I think I think you gotta go R2D2 suit. I think yeah. so too. I, like you said though. You'll never look back on that as being a regrettable look. No, not at all. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about is the, is, is the, basically the uh, 10 most common things that we regret as far as fashion choices from our past. Someone says the theory of the shoulder pads, and that's the number one one that was put, put on the list, uh, is to make the shoulders appear wider, to make the waist appear thinner. Stupid old logic. Oh, oh sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Dyeing your hair was number two on the list. I've done that one too many times. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's why I'm bald. That and my dad's bald. But, yeah. you know, other than that. <laughs> but, hey, you know, now it's, it, dyeing your hair now is such a big thing. I know a lot of people dyed their hair just because they wanted to be blonde or whatever. But now, I mean, people want to go all these multicolors, all yep. these different colors now. Everybody's dyeing their hair. Yeah, I've seen some people have, like, the crazy, like, rainbow I mean, basically rainbow hair. Oh, dude. I don't even know how much time that's been put into something like that. We have somebody that works here that does her hair that way, and it's awesome. Yeah. She looks amazing. I, I And I, I, I've only commented on it once because I don't want to be that creepy guy. But like you said, Steve, I'm just amazed at how good it looks every time. The work that she has to put into that must be something. And, and, and I... I mean, I think it looks amazing. See, for me, whenever I decided to dye my hair, I don't know if Danny did the same, but I know he's, I've seen pictures of him with some dyed spots on his hair, but I would always try and do it by myself. And I would think, oh, this would be easy. Blonde hair, no problem. And then it would turn out to be like this really awful, oh, yeah. orange, gold, yeah. Yeah. strawed out my hair. Yeah, It was just nasty. Good look. When you did have hair, what color was your hair? Is it brown. Is it brown or black? Dark, dark brown. Okay. So it almost looked black. Yeah. Yeah, I was so, going to yeah. say, to bleach that, nope. That's you have to leave to it in at least uh, three times. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, three different times. And I didn't have that patience. I did it yeah. once. It looked stupid and I just gave up. Yeah. yeah. And I shaved it. <laughs> yeah. Or I kept it for a minute and then my grandfather would make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> Good old granddad. Oh, yeah. One time he's like, I remember I did it in college and I came home and he picked me up at the, at the airport and he's like, you're not my grandson. <laughs> my grandson. <laughs> Someone looked this stupid. Wow. <laughs> he was joking. It's the kind of relationship we had. Yeah, you know, it's that, it's, it's, it's that New York love. He, he insulted me. I laughed. We bleached yeah. my brother's hair, and it was the same color. My dad called it the goat pee hair. Goat oh, pee. Lovely. Man, that's that brutal. Same color. Okay, well, I didn't know that goat pee was that color, but your dad's a worldly man. Yeah. So he says, sagging my pants when I was younger. Now I realized I look like an idiot. Baggy clothing, number four. It's funny because I, I, I have play clothes, you know, because I mean, remember you saw all have play oh, clothes? Oh, your play clothes. Yeah, and I, so I was walking around what the park. What play clothes? You never had play clothes where your parents would always say, get out of your good clothes and put on your play clothes? No. You never the had that? ones? Yeah, the ones that you like actually would go out yeah. outside and do stuff in? Exactly. Oh, yeah, because we would run around so much and my mother would be like, look, you only had so much money, you're not going to ruin your good clothes, put on your play clothes. I mean, maybe we did, I just don't remember that, but I don't remember, I just remember... <laughs> Just wearing my clothes. So I keep a lot of my old outfits as play clothes. Uh-huh. It's like, you know, because I, I walk around and there's mud in the park and everything, and I don't want to get them on any of my jeans that I'm going to wear normally. <laughs> Where you go, mudding? I go mudding. Mud. And I did that yesterday, and I, and it's my old baggy jeans that I used to wear back when we first started. How yeah. deep are you going into this mud, BJ? Oh, I'm going mud deep. Well, you know, just to get on the bottom of your... You don't want to get mud on your stuff. Just don't walk on the mud. 
Ah, uh, you're not you're not living if you don't. I mean, everywhere's muddy when you're walking in the rain around here, and you're walking in a park. All right, you can't you can't escape it. You know, they do have things called washing machines. It gets all that stuff out. Just well, fine. I know, but sometimes they ruin your good stuff. I don't want to do that. Okay, that's why I play clothes. Why do you guys give me? I, no, why? go ahead, you and your your crazy baggy play clothes. But that's what they were old stuff, and that's I I I, I, I don't know why I thought they looked good. They don't look good, do they? Baggy clothes. I remember there was a time where I was just like, no, it needs to be baggier. I need like baggier. Than Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why Jinko jeans were a thing. It was because the people wanted the baggiest things they could find. Someone even said, Jinko jeans, so dumb looking back. Skate or die. Oh I tried gosh. the Jinko jeans. I, mean, like, I remember sharing it one time. I bought one pair, and I thought, this is awesome. And it was at the height of the Jinko jeans phase of people having. And, and I put it on. I was like, I can't even do this. I never wore them in public. I wasn't oh, allowed. that bad, huh? My mom was like, no, you can't. You, I'm not buying you those jeans. They look dumb. And a I smart was like, woman. Uh, all right. How about the too much hair gel rock? How about you guys rock that? When I was yeah haired, yeah, <laughs> when I was haired. Now you're because I used to do spike. I, I would have yeah. that, like the super spikes yeah. with the mullet. I did that too, and I don't know. Again, I thought it was a good look. Of course, it was for the job because uh, I just had this distinctive look on the radio, and that was having spiky hair. Did you ever try to slick it all the way back with the the hair gel? That was my go to when I yeah. was uh, before I was in middle school. It, my mom just would just slick my hair back, and I was just a little little uh, gangster boy. Oh, I didn't even have to try. <laughs> if, if, if I didn't wash my hair every day, it would be I had oily hair. I could slick it back on its own if I didn't wash it every day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. How about a perm? You see you guys. Did anybody do that but me? No. no. Yeah, that was my generation. Perm was past my time. Yeah. We all had to get the Greg Brady, Johnny Bravo perm. The perm. Yeah, I got it. And then when it grew, I, and like my Bob hair. Ross, was, Bob Ross rocked the perm. Yeah. Everyone yeah. thought that was a legit act. It wasn't. And he must have got that done so much because I have super straight, well, when I had hair, I had super straight hair. So you had to really perm all the time because otherwise it would grow out and just look like this wavy mess. Which uh, there may be or may not be a picture of my yearbook that was put up uh, on a Throwback Thursday one time. Can we time. find that again? I need to see that. Oh, yeah. Dude, you the the hair is everywhere. It's just not good. I remember that was my mom's thing. Where we go to perm? Oh, all the time when I was a kid. And you could always tell when she would get one done because she'd come home and the whole house would just smell like a salon for three weeks. Did she oh, ever do yeah. the curlers? Oh, yeah. I remember my mom used to hang out in the house with the curler still in her hair. And I know. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 <laughs> it seems so Does anybody weird. rock that anymore? That was such a look seeing some lady come out in her curlers. I don't think so. Oh. Is this a BJ? That's the one. Oh, that's post-perm, I that's, would imagine. It's growing out. That, okay. that, that, yeah, and you can see the hair is just everywhere. It's like I, could, I can't get it to do anything because it's just like it's a dead perm. Dead perm. Dead, dead perm. perm. I think they're opening up for a yeah. animal corpse. <laughs> dead perm three. Is the uh, eyebrows like uh, on that list at all? Um, eyebrows. I'm trying to see. Uh, not eyebrows, a uh, colorful eyeshadow. What do you mean, like removing all the eyebrows and then and using, all, you know, how people would draw them on? Yeah. Right. Or I was just looking back at my old pictures from high school. I used to have like stick thin eyebrows. Oh, you pluck yeah. them that much? Yeah. Yeah, you have that look of uh, puzzlement at all times. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know that one emoji where the eyes are up and the brows are up too? <laughs> yeah. That's how Vicky looked yeah, back then. Yeah, they were really bad. They had no little. No, it was just a line. No, oh, yeah. we did. It was. We saw we were like a hip hop troupe, and so we we would get the the lines <laughs> shaved into our eyebrows. Oh yes, oh, of course. Yeah. And I'd shave my head. My buddy and I, we did the same thing, and we'd shave a little part in our head. Oh, of course, you did uh, to look like we have a you know like the hair part. You are new kids on the block. Yeah. No, man, we were like tribe called Quest and stuff. Oh, okay. oh that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, of course. From the streets. Yeah, you were from the streets. Right. New kids on the block. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> we were cool. Yeah. We weren't hanging tough. No. We were hanging rough. <laughs> yeah, that's it. How about skinny jeans that were too tight? Because they're back. The skinny jeans are back now, obviously. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I think they look so much better than the baggy jeans. And yet people used to give me such a hard time when I just, basically all I did was get a regular pair of jeans. But because they weren't super baggy, right. everybody thought they were skinny jeans. Oh, yeah. You have those people. Yeah. Especially when the change started happening where it started being less baggy and more of a, a slim cut or whatever they call it, straight leg. People are like, what are these skinny jeans? I'm like, no, skinny jeans, there's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because the skinny jeans are the ones that the rock stars can wear, you know, which is basically like, uh, they're super tight on you. How about bangs? Did you ever rock the bangs, Vicky? Yeah. I did. I did. And, you know, when, it depends I on like your how you face. I ask Vicky and you are the only two that didn't even think to ask anyone I mean, else. Sarah has them right now, but. Well, most of them, they weren't bad. I don't know many guys that rock bangs. Did you rock bangs? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> 
I had the kind of hair that, you know, if I didn't want my fat forehead showing, I had to have bangs. But if you don't have the face for it, it just makes your face look really round. Yeah, well, you got that. Again, there wasn't, I, I didn't have a whole lot to work with. <laughs> I just texted my buddy's 21 and he rocks a mullet with a perm. Wow. Is a mullet even on this list? No. You know why? Because mullets are still cool. <laughs> That's probably what it is. Tie-dye shirts. I used to, oh, I miss my tie-dye. I, was, I never got into oh, that. Oh, I had a cool one, and then I had to get rid of it. Why don't we have a tie-dye party? We can make tie-dyes, guys. Yeah. Well, I, listen, again, you know, I just want to wear it. Why do you want to make things? I just want to wear it. You can make one for me. I'll wear it. Sometimes the journey is just as cool as the destination, oh, bro. That's what it is, man. Yeah, man. So you're going to get high while you do this, is what you're saying. Okay. I mean, you don't have to. High dye <laughs> And then T-shirts with cartoon graphics on them. I'm not even sure. I mean, the T-shirts are so popular now. I'm not sure what they mean by cartoon like, graphics. Like the Simpsons. Remember Homer's? I mean, Bart Simpson was a popular T-shirt. Could, maybe that's what it Taz. is. Taz. I remember Taz, Taz being yep. a big one. He was all gangster. Yeah. What about airbrush T-shirts? That's still cool, right? Oh, my gosh. Of course. Well, those are awesome at the fair when you get those airbrush t-shirts. <laughs> They're making a come. They, they've come back, ironically, I don't right? Think they ever left at the fair. <laughs> oh, I agree. At the fair, they haven't. My, my father-in-law loved the airbrush wolf sweatshirts and oh. t-shirts we every christmas he'd want one and did we'd get a, one for him did he have a cool velvet painting also in the house oh, he loved elvis of course he did yes no, are you kidding me <laughs> there were velvet elvises everywhere my my grandfather would i should say the kid's grandfather my step my step well he's a guy who's married to my mother-in-law okay that's who he was and he <laughs> loved all that stuff with all these marriages and everything, I don't know how to call anybody any name anymore. But, oh, he was he was something. He had the velvet Elvises, and he always loved those sweatshirts that were airbrushed with a wolf on them. I had a sweet velvet Elvis painting, and I, I, I got creative with it. And looking back, I still I would I should do it again. I, I I cut out the velvet painting in the velvet, and then and attached it to my bass drum head, and I had a velvet Elvis bass drum head. Nice. Oh, that's actually and it was really pretty cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah, dude, I like that. Yeah, it's a great idea. I need to do that again. You, yeah, how did you not keep that? Well, I mean, eventually, you know, things happen. <laughs> wow. Well, it's the destination I forgot or the journey or whatever. <laughs> you find it to not be as cool after you do it for a long time and you just switch to something else. Oh, but now you're like, you, dude, you bring it back. I got to go hit one of those random streets where people are selling like the giant wolf blankets. I bet they sell velvet paintings. Still, do they right? make like velvet Jesuses? Because I know you play uh, you play drums for Jesus. Oh, Would that be what, sacrilege? I, that'd be yeah. awkward. <laughs> but you, you're honoring the man that you're playing for, right? Yeah. All right, I'll see how that goes. Yeah. I think that'd be a nice idea. <laughs> Please film it. Yeah, they, oh, how about I get the Velvet Elvis Velvet Jesus That's, thing? That's, yes. They're both in heaven. And oh. put that on your, yeah, put that in your base. Oh, yeah, they'll love that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Somebody says hypercolor t-shirts. I had a blue one that turned pink. Oh, I remember those. Oh, those are cool. Oh. Yeah. Oh, somebody says, what about Charlotte Hornets jackets? That's right. For a while, it was like, like the Raiders were the popular random sports team. But then there was a moment where it was the, the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. I had a baseball cap. I didn't have the jacket. Yeah, I, I missed all that. Yeah. I had a San Jose Sharks uh, starter jacket. Uh, I barely knew who the San Jose Sharks were. Didn't know anything about hockey. And uh, yeah. I wanted that jacket. I wanted that jacket because everyone had it. That was like one of those cool status things. Yeah. Well, uh, we're talking a little sports. I know Rev doesn't care, but he brought it up. Of course, tomorrow's opening day. That's right. For, you know, the home opener for T-Mobile Park. Hopefully they'll fix the sign uh, because the the B is out. They're just going to replace a light bulb, I'm sure. I'm sure they can figure that out. I'm sure it's fixed by now. You sure? Uh, Yeah, okay. Well, of course, with, uh, you know, with baseball, of course, comes walk-up music for each batter. And there's a a player right now using the most obnoxious song ever as his walk-up music. What is it? You're going to hear it at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Rangers shortstop Elvis Andrus is using Baby Shark as his walk-up music. Oh, no. Yeah, this is going to be fascinating every time he comes to the plate. Yeah, apparently this isn't the first person to do it. Someone texted and said that Dan Daniel uh, Vogelbach uh, used the song in Tacoma because uh, uh, his son liked it. Well, that's exactly why Elvis Andrews is doing it. The same thing. He, his, it's his kid's favorite song. So, well, attention, ladies and gentlemen, now batting for the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Look at Vicky, she's loving it. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> I don't see how that can't be great. 
People are going to love that. Yep, I think you stay there with it. We'll see what happens on Thursday. We got to the bottom of the biggest mystery of tonight, and that is the story behind the Elvis Andrews walk-up song, which is Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. I talked to Elvis in the dugout just a bit ago, and I said, Elvi, what's up with the walk-up song? He got a giant smile on his face and said, you like it? And I said, <laughs> not, not, not exactly. And he was like, it's awesome. It's my boy's favorite song. So he's playing it for Elvis Jr. You know, for the longest time, I heard all the jokes about the Baby Shark song. I stayed away from hearing what the song was. I think it wasn't until Vicky finally started singing it, and then I went online, and I'm just like, this can't really be how the song goes. Yeah. And then you yeah. hear it, and you're like, yeah. this is exactly how that song goes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I feel bad for all the parents out there right now. And what is this? Uh, what is it? What's the origins of this Baby Shark song again? Is it like it's a an YouTube shark? Duh. Oh yeah, of course. It's, yeah, it, it's just a company that makes infant and toddler songs, and it's just something to teach about family, I guess. Okay. I mean, because they go through all of them, like Grandpa and Daddy Shark, and oh, there's okay. a Halloween Baby Shark. So oh, is, right. is this a YouTube show or is this an actual show? Yeah, I thought it was a YouTube show, and uh, it's thought, uh, just a song. It's a, 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 well, I mean, I thought it was on a YouTube show where it debuted. I'm wrong about that. No, it's just a children's song about family sharks. Oh, wow. That's right. God. Yeah, it's just a song done by a company called Pink Fong that does a bunch of different uh, songs. Good for Pink Fong that they were able to Pink make Pink Fong this. or Pink Fong? Fong, oh, Steve. I was like, jeez, that's a weird name for Do a you want to know how many views this thing has? No. 2.5 billion. billion. Yeah. B. Billion. billion. I used to be impressed with your Sunships video, but no. Ah. Yeah, I've got to step it up. Someone says it's been, it was a popular as a campfire song. I would leave that campsite. I would let it a burn. A campfire the song? It's been popularized since the mid-2010s by social media and online video and also radio. Who the heck came up with this one? And that, is that person getting paid? That's the question. Whoever came up with this dumb lyric, are they getting paid? Because it's like the happy birthday thing. Is anyone going to know who really did it? Oh, my gosh. There's, there's a controversy behind the song. Oh, really? I don't know if you know this. Oh, dear. <laughs> Okay. It shows that we get upset about everything. Apparently, because the, in uh, the Korean version of the song, it says, Mommy Shark is pretty, Daddy Shark is strong, Grandma Shark is kind, and Grandpa Shark is cool. And they feel that these are s- sexist lyrics. Uh. So, oh, because they call the girls pretty and yes. kind? Yes. Oh, and the dudes are cool. Cool and strong. Well, there are some countries that still, you know, they, they, they still... They embrace the matriarchal and patriarchal stereotypes. What are you going to do? That's where the countries are at. You know, I think I mean? the most uh, offensive part of the song is just the song. Yeah, the yeah. song's very yeah. offensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, what is the baby shark? Has the baby shark decided? Uh, is she cool? Is he, uh, is he strong? But you know what the baby shark's all about. No, we don't. See? That's the real controversy. We, we need an E-True Hollywood story about the baby shark. <laughs> so... Is this is this is, so? If, if the origin with the, with the origin did it origin oh, did the origin happen in another country? Germany, it sounds like. Maybe. Oh, okay. I so it's not. So it was. It's not an. It wasn't an English song first. But we we sort of cribbed it from something I else. I don't know. It says there was a version in France called Bebe Requin, oh, and yes. then the German one Kellner High. Oh uh, yeah, your son. Yeah. So you're, you're really yeah. doing a great job. You're knocking it out of the park. Yep. And yeah. so then the, later, there's a YouTube video of a German woman singing the song. So that kind of it, it was a poem or a nursery rhyme back in the day, I guess. Oh really? Yeah. It says it was uh, when I was a kid, we would sing this song at summer camp. How long ago was that? It had to be like they said the what the mid 2010s. Yeah. When well, this not is not that long ago. And but literally, this is saying the origins in the early 20th century. Yeah, early 20th century. We're talking them. We're talking 1910s, 1920s. My person, the song is so old. My siblings and I used to sing the song back in the late 90s. I don't remember this song at all. And some people <laughs> are saying that it might be inspired by the movie Jaws. Oh, that's probably it. <laughs> and apparently that dude, Leo, that does uh, all the heavy metal versions of pop songs, he's done a, a metal version of the song. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd be Which, interested in hearing that song. Yeah, you might need to pull that up. That, yeah. might, that might be the only okay. way we could cleanse the, the crappy version out of our head. Yeah. But it is a funny way to come out. I mean, I would get a kick out of hearing that in the ballpark. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And yeah. I think kids love it because they have in the music video kids singing and dancing and there's a bunch of cartoon sharks and I, I, I mean, I like it. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's very simple the way that... I the way everything kid, about this. You yeah. like that, but you don't like the floss dance? Oh, the floss dance is stupid. I can't even talk to you right now. Yeah. Maybe because like... Watching little kids freak out to this is awesome. Lily hates the song. See, I like this text. Uh, yeah. Good for Lily. She's, she's got, got taste. She's got yeah. bad taste. This text is this really the best thing you guys could find to talk about? No. Yeah. And I, I also found the song. Okay, now we can do better. Yeah, the metal version by uh, Leo at Frog Leap. Yeah. 
If he just says this, I'm fine with it. Baby shot. Baby shot. Baby shot. I was expecting him to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Bobby shot. He's gonna get aggressive. He's got to say it has to kick in at some point. Yeah. There we go. Nice. That's sexist. Someone says they were doing this at a campfire day camp back in 1998. Oh, that's awesome. See, Elvis Andrews should walk out to this. Actually, that would be pretty awesome. And that's where this all started because Texas Rangers shortstop Elvis Andrews, because his kid loves the song, this is going to be his walkout music when he comes to the plate this year. That's a great way to troll everybody in the audience. I agree. And he's doing it for his kid. I mean, you know, how can you fault the guy? What song would you come out to? You're playing baseball. And what's your walkout song? Oh, dude, I always loved uh, Mariano Rivera's. What was this? Uh, Enter Sandman. Oh, that is pretty great. Yeah, dude, yeah. I thought, you know, the former closer for the Yankees. That was awesome. That's I, right. I love that walkout music. Well, it makes sense for him. Yeah. Right? I mean, exactly. Yeah. I, I always, my, my, my fantasy is to be a closer. I mean, whenever I always thought about what kind of ball player I would be, I'd be the guy that they call in the bottom of the ninth to shut the door and preserve the wind. I always wanted to be a the closer. Wild thing. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Mar- you know, I love that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, that's my, that, that, that Mariano's music, man as much as i hated him every time i heard it when he came in against the red Sox, it was like god this is cool music though mine i mean i'm sure people have done it but i i I would have to make sure i'm a good baseball player although it would be funny if i was the worst player on the team and i came out every time like now up to bat steve meggs that would be funny i agree that would be great music yeah yeah then you just swing at a miss strike three Dude, that would be fantastic. What about you, Rev? Uh, never gonna give you up. Uh, might as well Rick, do it. Rick yeah. roll, people. Yeah, might as well. I mean, everything else is gonna be a Rick roll with me out there. It's gonna be sad and depressing anyway. So. That's true. Danny? <laughs> Come out and play by the Offspring. Of course. It's yeah. an Offspring song. Yeah. What about Vicky? I've been uh, hey, I've go. been obsessed with uh, Billie Eilish. <laughs> Have you guys heard of her? Yes. Uh, the Crown song. It's like, uh, you should see me in a crown. I think that would be your walk music when you come to the plate. You should see me in a crowd. Yeah, I just think it'd be badass. All right. So it says, BJ, yours could be I Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain. <laughs> <laughs> or girls just want to have fun. Either oh, one. Oh, yeah. girls just want to have fun. That could be but yours. That, that would be mine. I would, if I had to pick out of that, uh, that would definitely Cindy Lauper. So it says, his buddy used to walk out to Man in the Box. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Pantera Walk. That would have been perfect for me in Little, Wee- Little League or Little Wee. Because that's all you ever did. Because <laughs> that's what my coach always wanted me to do, is just lean into yeah. the pitch, because a walk is as good as a hit. Take the base, Steve. It's like foreshadowing. Take one for the team, Steve. Hey, how about this? Um, uh, I got to talk to Rev because I know he was planning on seeing a movie that I'm very interested in. Oh, uh, did you see us? Did you get to see us? Yes. Oh my God, that That's, was a good movie. It's a new number Jordan one Peele movie. movie. It's the number one movie in the world. Dude, yeah. Jordan Peele, in the world, world, brother. Jordan <laughs> Peele right now has got to be the it director of our generation. It's, he, a, it's amazing. His second movie is good. Yeah, and like here's the thing: like I've only known him, you know, before the, this and Get Out were uh, the the Key and Peele. Comedies and then yeah. like Keanu, like so these are like you know the funny movies, but Keanu rocks. Keanu is an amazing movie, but for horror, this guy is master class. He is the next guy to take over for all of the people, uh, you know, the old people, John Carpenter, uh, all those people who used to make the horror movies. He's the guy now. And wow. and um, was this a surprise? I, I never thought I'd be getting this from Jordan Peele. Um, I, not up until Get Out. But once he did Get Out, yeah. I was like, okay, he knows he knows horror. He knows what he's getting into with these. And this movie, fantastic. Did he direct Keanu? I know he was in it. Did he direct it? I don't know for sure. See, this is the thing: is these are movies he's directing, and I I, I just assumed Get Out was his first movie, but I didn't. I, I, maybe he did direct it's it. No, yeah. people he did not direct it. So okay. no. People are talking about the soundtrack being pretty awesome too. That it's like you, NWA is featured in it. Yes, heavily. Like the soundtrack, we're uh, the wife and I pulled it up beforehand, and there's a bunch of uh, artists that I don't know anything about, but they have they have some Dre in there, and they have some cool old school stuff as well. It's a 
are really like that soundtrack is pretty amazing. So the concept of this movie, without spoiling it, because I mean, obviously, uh, the greatest thing about Get Out is you just don't tell anybody what's going on and let folks just go on that journey of that movie. Yeah, uh, um, is this the same kind of thing? Y- yeah, yeah. I mean, the trailers. If you've seen the trailers, you you realize kind of know. You kind of know what's going on. Some S is going down with a family. That's what it looks like. Exactly. I'm at the trailer right now. There's one family, and then there seems to be a mirror version of that family who is now terrorizing them. Yeah. And it goes through all of that, and uh, it is. What's one of those things where it's like, yes, there, there, there. It's a thriller. There's not necessarily a whole bunch of jump scares, but there's a couple of them. But I just love the people who are like, oh, I saw it, and it wasn't scary at all. I'm like, it's, it's. There's. It's intense. And See, we, I like that. I like the, the psychological kind of thrillers yeah. because sometimes those jump scare ones are just, I just think they're dumb. Yeah, there's a lot of moments of like yeah. tension and like you're talking about the music. The soundtrack that goes along with it is very good, uh, both with uh, the, the up-to-date music and then just the, the composed music that they have with it as well. Yeah, Get Out was like that. Get Out didn't yeah. have a lot of jump scares, but it was a great, intense movie. Exactly. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's very intense and uh, I love it. Like, I'll go see this one in the theater theaters again because you want you want to go see a movie like this with a bunch of people because that's part of the fun of it and seeing it in a theater like that or like with a big group of your friends at your house that's the way you should be watching these movies now i know get out had like the underlying message of you know the subtle racism and things like throughout the entire movie did Mm -hmm. this want to have something like that like a meaning underneath it there's a message but to be perfectly honest it didn't really dawn on me while I was watching it I was really kind of set in the story of what is going on I mean if you look it up yes there's absolutely a message that goes out there and I'm not going to give any of that away because it kind of lends towards spoiling the movie Um, there is but it doesn't uh, it's not overbearing and some people thought maybe Get Out was a little bit overbearing on that end but it's not it's really not for this movie it's just a good thriller yeah, and I actually didn't. Um, I get the message that Get Out was giving, and I still didn't find it overbearing. I thought it was a great story. It, it, uh, I really yeah. felt it was too. Yeah, I felt like you know what the story. Even if there's a message in there, you know what it's a it's a it's a valid message to be put in anything. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. It didn't hit me over the head. The movie and was great. This is the same uh, the same amount. The lead actress Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, she's great. She is fantastic in this movie. I didn't Any, even realize she uh, was in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she is the lead actress. Any talking cats? No talking oh, cats. Sorry, unfortunately, oh, okay, I'll wait for it to come out on demand then. <laughs> (laughs) Captain Marvel has a cat in it that doesn't talk. Somebody says, Us was decent at best. The Mm -hmm. reveal was subpar, didn't explain anything, and the twist at the end, I called it in the opening minutes. Oh, Oh. good good for you. Wow. Like, congratulations, you know movies. The movies get well. This this person this person apparently is just going. I don't know what the uh, the, the uh, audience thinks of it. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a very high how high much, mark. How much did it get on the RT? Yeah, I think they got in the nineties on RT. The RT. I don't the know RT. Yeah, it was. I know certified fresh. Ninety five percent. And what about the people? It's clicking seventy two. All right. Ooh. So I mean, seventy two isn't bad. Right. So it sounds like it's an artsy fartsy film. Huh? Could be a little artsy it's fartsy. It's not artsy fartsy. Rev liked it. I, I liked it. Rev's an artsy fartist. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait. I'm not a horror movie thriller kind of person, but I feel like the people who are are very uppity. Like they are kind of like the, uh, the the oh the horror the movie people are very uppity. Yeah, they're they're, they're, lo- they're pretty snobby. They're very snobby yeah. on oh. what's good and what's not. It's not like the classics. Yeah, and it's one of those things where I think, and the fact that people are wanting com- wanting to compare it to the classics, I think is telling right there because I, I really feel that he is getting into his groove with these. These are the first two horror movies, uh, Get Out in this, and if he does any better, he's going to be like seriously, like I said, master class. And these are the o- and only thing he's ever directed. Yeah, I feel like, you know, so it's just these two movies. I feel like it's better to compare him to a Hitchcock than like some of these horror guys. Interesting, Somebody said yeah. that he's our new uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Hopefully he doesn't go down that same trajectory. Well, he's had the second movie be good. Yeah. I mean, by most people's assessment, because M. Night, uh, you know. So yeah. he's going to reboot The Village? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. I, 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 and he's also uh, CBS, my CBS All Access app. One of the reasons why I decided to pay full price is he's redoing the Twilight Zone that's coming out yes. next month. That's yeah, a, that should be pretty interesting. I'm, well, I'm stoked for that because people have tried to, and it's so hard to capture the magic of the original series. We'll see if Jordan Peele can do it. Nice. All right, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. The gods Loki, Hell, and Frey are from which mythological tradition? The Avengers. <laughs> no. Uh, the Greek gods. No. What was the question? The gods Loki, Hell, and Frey are from which mythological tradition? It's not Freya, huh? It's Frey? Uh, uh, I don't know. Mariners. No. 
Go Mariners. Go Mariners. Go Mariners. Opening day. Big day tomorrow. Yeah, we were looking for Norse, by the way, there, buddy. It's a big day tomorrow, though. Mariners opening up against the Boston Red Sox. Four o'clock game time. Your first play, Seattle Mariners. Thank you. 2-0, yeah. That's right, because that Japan series. What does that have to do with Steve? Nothing. You can still beat him. 206 421 Rock. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I file for bankruptcy, do I have to appear in court? That makes me nervous. Going to court is never something something that's easy to do. However, when you file bankruptcy, you usually only have to attend one hearing at the courthouse. Of course, I'll be there with you. And when you go to court, it's not before the judge. It's actually with the trustee or the trustee's attorney. One of the, one of the things that's, that's critical in a bankruptcy is that you give your attorney and the court all of, the, all of your information. You list all of your assets and all of your creditors. That's what we're trading for your discharge is your true and honest uh, disclosure of your assets and liabilities. And so the court hearing is just usually about a five-minute deal where you show up and, and reaffirm and, and swear that all the information you've given the court and your attorney is correct. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Com. Thanks for listening. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit TanklessMadeSimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Count on Navian.